Okay, good morning. <laughs> Welcome to our Geffen webinar. I'm Oren Charm. I'm a product manager at Geffen. And we're going to be talking about the uh, video over IP matrix revolution, a uh, new way to do, uh, to do video matrix systems. Um, and uh, talk about some of Geffen's new products for, uh, for video matrixing. Um, a little bit of background on me. I grew up in, uh, in the AV business. Um, let's see. There we go. Uh, started off at an early age. In high school, I was uh, one of the guys on the AV team uh, learning how to thread film through old Bell & Howell 16-millimeter projectors and wheel slide projectors in around and on carts into the classrooms. Um, we were part of the, the AV team, so I'm, I'm one of the AV guys. That's, that none of these pictures are me, however. Um, but, you know, we thought we were cool. Uh, not nearly as cool as, uh, as this lady, but uh, we were cool. And uh, the difference in the old days is that it was kind of a set it and forget it world. You uh, came into the classroom, you set up the projector, you disappeared. Uh, once the picture is on the screen, um, you're done. And uh, all you have to do is come back later and pick up the pieces. Uh, however, in, the, in this new age of AV meets IT, it's kind of a different world because uh, you're not done when the picture is on the screen. Uh, IT managers want constant vigilance. They want to know what's going on on the network. They want confirmation. Uh, the what's on the screen is still on the screen, and they want things like network and data security, uh, network management. Uh, plus, it's always nice uh, to have remote service, remote tech support, remote configuration. Um, we're not in high school anymore, and you can't just walk down the hall to fix a problem. So uh, this has given rise to a whole new, uh, new ways to distribute uh, video and audio. Um, traditional matrix systems, Geffen has been in the video matrix business uh, almost since we started. Uh, we make a lot of matrix switches. Uh, probably a lot of you are familiar, uh, familiar with the products. Um, but traditional matrices are square. Uh, you can get a 4x4, four four, an 8x8, 16x16, 32x32. There's... Uh, there's two by fours and other configurations, but generally you're limited to the size of the matrix that you bought. So if you want, if you have a four by four matrix and you need to add a fifth screen, uh, you basically need to get rid of the four by four, replace it with an eight by eight, which now has more capacity than you needed. Um, so that's one limitation. That's a big limitation. If you want to, if you have 17 screens, you're into a 32 by 32 matrix, which is a pretty expensive proposition if you were just looking for one more screen or one more source. Um, another limitation is that uh, traditional matrix systems are located in one place. So if you have audio and video all over your uh, facility, cutting in and out. Um, not sure why. That's interesting. Uh, is it still cutting in and out? Hopefully not. Um, at any rate, uh, you have to run all of your video signals back to uh, one central location where the matrix is located. Uh, that's not always convenient, especially if you need to add or move uh, one of your sources or displays. As we said, they're not generally expandable. Uh, Geffen's had a line of modular matrices that have some expansion capability. But in general, um, what you buy is what you get. And finally, traditional matrices are expensive. Uh, there's a lot of electronics, cross-point switches. Um, it's an expensive device to build. Uh, even with costs coming down, uh, they're still pretty expensive. So these are limitations of uh, conventional matrices. And uh, one of the nice things about IP matrices is that they don't have to be square. You can have a lot of sources and a few displays, or you can have a larger number of displays and fewer sources. 
Um, in fact, you don't even, uh, it doesn't need to be uh, one matrix. Uh, you can have multiple two by four here, or two by two there, or three by two somewhere else. Um, the signals don't have to run back to a central location. All they have to do is access the network, and the network can be anywhere. Uh, especially if you have fiber links, you can have very long distances between portions of the network. Uh, another big advantage is that you can start, you can buy what you need uh, right now to uh, to suit your needs, and uh, all you need is one sender uh, per source and one receiver per display, and you can build whatever size that you need. Uh, and as the matrix grows, you don't need to change what's already there. You don't need to change your hardware. Uh, the same sender will work for a 4 by 4 is uh, uh, 52 by 84. Uh, you don't need to change existing cabling. Everything that's there can stay there. Uh, a big feature is that you don't need to change existing programming. You can add sources. You can add displays um, to the system and, uh, and keep what's what's pre-existing and keep it in operation. Um, you don't have to change your network infrastructure. Again, uh, what's there can stay and you can simply add to it. Um, with the Geffen matrix, we have capability of having up to 255 senders and that's, uh, that's gonna be increasing in the near future. And over 65,000 total devices uh, within uh, the limits of network capacity, and we'll talk about that when we get into network architecture. Uh, you can mix source and display types. We have senders and receivers for HDMI, DVI, and VGA, um, and you can mix and match sources and displays, uh, bearing in mind that uh, HDCP rules do apply, so uh, you can't send a content-protected source to a VGA display, for example. And you can do long distance extensions. Like I said, uh, using CAT6, you can go up to 100 meters between switches and up to 10 kilometers over single mode fiber. So you have a lot of, uh, lot of ways to extend the system. And we'll get into that as we talk about the system components. So uh, what goes into a uh, video IP matrix? Well, uh, the first part are the senders and receivers, and Geffen has a line of both uh, KVM senders and receivers and also uh, video only. The KVM devices, which is where this orig originally started out, uh, are made for HDMI, DVI, or VGA, and they also, in addition to the video, they'll extend USB uh, 2.0, RS-232, infrared signals, and analog audio. And as you can see, uh, let's see, the uh, receiver unit also has a built-in switch. So you can actually uh, connect other devices to the network uh, through, uh, through the uh, KPM receiver. Uh, USB, again, up to 408 megabytes of backwards compatibility, and these are designed primarily for computer, keyboard, mouse, uh, audio switching, uh, for edit tapes, server rooms, classrooms, any place where you need uh, all, all of those uh, signals to be switched. And then we also offer a, um, an HDMI version that is video only. It also extends and switches RS-232 and infrared, uh, but doesn't do USB or separate audio or RS or separate audio. And this is ideal for digital signage applications. It's good for general video distribution. Uh, again, for classroom, conference room applications. Um, these will handle up to 1080p, 60 hertz, full HD and uh, 1920 by 1200, uh, very low latency, less than three frames, um, and it supports all of the uh, HDMI uh, 1.3 functionality. Um, and finally, uh, you need a network switch, and these are a few switches that we have tested and recommend. 
Um, the Netgear GS724 is a low-cost switch that uh, also gives you a couple of gigabit SFP ports, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, SFP ports are basically uh, can be adapted using SFP modules to various media and various formats. So you can plug these into the switch that had fiber ports, copper ports, uh, different types of connectors, uh, uh, different types of fiber. Um, we also, uh, Netgear ProSafe switch offers uh, 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 10 gigabit uplink ports. And this is important. And again, we'll talk about network architecture. Uh, the Juniper series, and finally Cisco SG300 or 500, uh, 500X. Uh, the X indicates that the uh, uplink ports are 10 gig. And again, when you get into uh, more advanced systems and you need to have higher bandwidth between switches, um, uh, the 10 gigabit SFP modules uh, can come in handy. Now, we don't require a specific switch. We don't do um, any uh, particularly customized programming on the switches. Uh, so in most cases, almost any switch that meets the minimum requirements will work. But these are some examples that uh, we've tested in our lab. Uh, we have configuration support for them. Um, if you want to use additional switches, uh, you can talk to our tech support, but uh, you may be on your own as far as the specific uh, switch configuration is concerned. Uh, simple system example, uh, as we said, the system architecture is uh, that the, your sources connect to senders, the senders plug into the switch, uh, receivers plug into the switch and feed displays, and you can look at and control the entire system using a PC. Um, notice that you don't uh, need to have a router in such a system. If this is a dedicated uh, view over IP system, uh, you can operate uh, strictly with the switch, uh, and just configure the switch uh, for the uh, specific requirements. And uh, again, for control, uh, Geffen has a free download on our geffen.com slash support uh, that's a keyboard uh, controller that will allow you to set up and operate a simple matrix uh, just using keyboard key combinations that you can program in. Um, however, uh, as when the systems get more complicated, uh, you may need a, a better way of managing and uh, controlling the whole system. And for that purpose, uh, Geffen recently introduced our EXTCU LAN matrix controller. And this device basically uh, pretty much transforms your video over IP devices into a single matrix solution. So it gives you a front panel keyboard that you can use to operate the system, uh, digital display, infrared control, and it also does a lot of the setup functions uh, as well. Uh, the enclosure is designed so it can either be rack mounted or it can sit on the tabletop. It's uh, a triangular enclosure. And uh, it makes setup very simple because uh, it uses our Geffen Synergy, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes, um, to make setup as simple as uh, any normal matrix. Why is it cutting in and out? Because of bandwidth. Uh, I guess I can yeah. try to kill the camera. Yeah. yeah you can kill the camera. See if okay. See if that helps. Okay. Okay. Uh, hopefully that's better. Uh, anyway, getting back to uh, CU LAN, uh, this makes setup and routing extremely simple, and it. Uh, also gives you multi-user control. You're able to set up users and groups and segregate the network into uh, whatever portions you need to manage it. And uh, you use one button auto IP assignment. And we'll talk about that uh, again as we go. Um, using, the, using the CU LAN, uh, here's a simple system example. 
Uh, it's pretty much the same as the other one. The difference is we've added the CU LAN to the network. And uh, again, that's handling all your setup and your IP addressing and your switching. And the CU LAN is using UDP switching, which is faster than the normal TCP switching. So you get a definite uh, improvement in performance. And you also get a web GUI, which is much more friendly than that uh, than our keyboard switcher and uh, allows you to select any source, select the destination, and route at the push of a button. Um, also supports presets, and you can click a preset to immediately uh, change a large number of uh, users. And in addition to this uh, matrix view, we also have a list view where you can actually list uh, different devices and the grid view, which is scalable and allows you to simply select uh, location and initiate uh, the matrix change. So this is pretty much, uh, it's actually probably simpler than most conventional matrices because our, our web GUI uh, is designed to make operation a lot easier um, than a traditional matrix. So let's talk about the setup procedure. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a few quick steps to, uh, to do your setup. Uh, the first thing that you would do is set the desired IP address range uh, in your system. So if you're uh, going into a new, uh, a new dedicated uh, network, you can set up any IP address that you want. If you're going into an existing network, uh, you would ask the network administrator for a range of IP addresses that are not in use by other devices, and you simply uh, uh, put that IP address range into the uh, CU LAN, and the CU LAN will then discover all the devices on the network automatically and can auto-assign them and basically uh, uh, give each unit a uh, dedicated uh, sequential IP address. Uh, another function we have is this show me function. And if you're trying to locate a specific sender or receiver, uh, you can highlight it, click show me, and that will make the lights on that device flash so that you can see it in the rack or verify that you're connected to the, to the proper unit. So that, uh, that makes setup um, of devices very simple. Um, in the old days, before we added the discovery function, uh, setting up devices, IP devices on the network was a very time-consuming process. Uh, you basically, um, if you use DHCP, you could use, uh, you could design devices that way, but then you run the risk of having those devices change addresses and not be accessible if your router changes their DHCP assignment. So typically, uh, when devices are equipped with a, a static IP address, what you had to do is find out the IP address of the device you were adding, uh, go into your PC, set up its network uh, settings, and change its network settings to be compatible with a new device. Then they would allow you to access the new device. You could change its IP settings to be compatible with the network and then uh, go back to your computer and change it back to what it was before. Um, and hopefully you did write down what it was before. Um, so it was a time consuming the, the process that had to be gone through for each, each new device. You had to add one device at a time to the network because if you put more than one device on the network that shared the IP address, uh, you wouldn't be able to access any of those devices. They would all be hidden from each other. So uh, this process uh, made adding devices uh, to an existing network a very tedious procedure. Uh, now we're using Geffen Synergy, and you can basically plug all these devices into your network. Uh, again, set your desired range, set your gateway address and subnet mask, click auto assign, and uh, Synergy uh, does all the assignments, gives every unit a, uh, its own individual IP address, and uh, does that entire process with one click. 
so once you have all your uh, devices uh, hooked up to the, to the network, the next step is to set up users. And the user assignment process is, again, uh, fairly simple. You simply add a user. Uh, and when you add a user, you're, you can give them a, uh, a friendly name and also give them an access level. So we have access levels of uh, operator, group administrator, and administrator. So you can define the users for each uh, and their access level. And then the next step is to create groups. So you can create a group uh, like sales or uh, engineering or conference room two or whatever and then you can add users to the group so they become members so a user is anyone that's authorized on the system a member is a user that's been added to a group so um, once you set up a group and add members uh, the last step is to add devices to the group so now if you create a group called sales, you can take all of the inputs that are uh, sources for sales, add them to the group, and uh, all the displays that are associated with that group can be added. So once you've added the devices and um, the users to the group, that group has complete functionality within the, within the system. Uh, also, part of uh, setting up the network um, we have access to network settings, um, so you can set up the system uh, IP addresses, set up uh, TCP and UDP addresses, and control discovery, and um, also system settings. And one of the nice things about uh, the CU LAN is it lets you download your entire configuration to an XML file, so you can store all of the system settings, and you can restore the settings if anything changes. Uh, you can also, from this screen, you can update system firmware. Uh, you can do a factory reset, uh, et cetera. And uh, finally, we have discovery settings. Uh, as we talked about, uh, this allows you to find all the devices on the network uh, to create users and groups, uh, select views, and uh, select presets. Um, all this is using an extension of Geffen's discovery tool. Hopefully, uh, all or most of you have already downloaded this tool. It's a, it's a free download from Geffen's website. Uh, and there's also a discovery uh, app for both um, iTunes and Android that can be downloaded from the, uh, from the Apple App Store or the, or the, Geffen, or the, the, the Google Play Store. And uh, this will also allow you to uh, see all Geffen devices on your network. And the way this works is that all of the uh, our new Geffen IP devices, including all of the video over IP devices, uh, send out a discovery beacon that allows them to be seen across uh, network uh, IP addresses. So even if the IP address that the device is set to is not compatible with your network, IP addresses, we'll still be able to find the device and uh, you can actually change it uh, on an individual basis using the discovery tool. Uh, like I said, uh, the uh, CU LAN actually goes beyond this and actually does auto assignment. So it'll find all of the uh, uh, LAN devices and automatically give them IP addresses. Um, so you can use a combination of the discovery tool in the CU LAN and uh, Geffen Synergy software, uh, which also offers a number of other management tools uh, beyond the, the CU LAN. Uh, give you some additional system design examples. Uh, as we talked about earlier, you can simply plug a bunch of devices into a switch uh, configure the switch and uh, you're ready to go. In a more complex system, you may have multiple switches and uh, what we're showing here is that you have an existing router connected to the cloud, uh, connected to your switch, you have your source devices plugged in, your displays are plugged into receivers, they're on the network, 
you have your CU LAN, additional computers, and then you can use uh, an extension from that switch going to another switch in another location. And what we're showing here is that using those SFP fiber modules, uh, you can actually run a uh, 10 gig uh, extension to another switch. And at the other switch, you can have additional displays and additional sources. Um, Again, uh, you have your choice here by using different SFP ports. You can have copper, single mode, multi-mode, uh, different connector options on your fiber uh, just by changing those, um, those SFP modules. Uh, one thing that we do need to look out for is, uh, is network bandwidth. And uh, looking at this example, uh, you can see what your bandwidth requirements are. In this case, we have two sources uh, connected to the main switch. So uh, you could conceivably have uh, those two sources running to your second switch, as well as the third source that's on the second switch running back to the, to the first switch. So you could have a maximum of three video signals running simultaneously over this link. Um, and the typical 1080p uh, 60 video signal is about 150 megabits per second. So um, you've got about 450 megabits uh, per second uh, bandwidth requirement over this network. So um, you do have to be careful as you add sources and displays that you allow enough bandwidth between switches. Uh, typically the switch fabric uh, in within the switch is going to isolate uh, your bandwidth uh, between ports on the switch. So um, this is the area that you have to contend with. And uh, also notice that adding more sources in this particular example, adding more sources would not increase uh, the bandwidth across this link because you only have two displays. So you could only have a maximum of two, uh, two signals, uh, signal paths uh, going to these two displays. Um, however, and however, as you add sources, you're going to increase the general uh, bandwidth requirements of the network. Adding receivers does not increase the bandwidth requirement um, because a receiver doesn't uh, add any bandwidth to the network. However, it may add an additional signal path to the network. So uh, you do need to look at uh, overall system architecture when you're designing a large system uh, to be sure that you won't have uh, uh, network congestion somewhere as a result. Uh, one thing that uh, we also allow with the CU LAN is it has two, uh, two LAN ports in the back. So you actually can separate your video and control networks. And we also have PoE support on the control network. So if, you're, uh, if your regular network uh, supports PoE, you can eliminate the, uh, the power connector. And you can, uh, you can simply divide the switch between your video devices and your regular network. And control sources can be on either side of the network. So you can have a computer over here controlling the network. Uh, and keep your video off of the, your standard data network. Um, now, multiple CU LAN units, at the present time, you can only have one CU LAN in the system. However, we're working on the system upgrade that would allow you to put uh, CU LAN units in multiple places. Um, as far as uh, configuration issues, there are some settings that uh, you need to be aware of in, uh, in setting up a system. Um, flow control should not be enabled on any network port passing the video stream because you want the video to be transmitted unimpeded. But you do need to enable IGMP query and snooping on all supported network switches uh, because this will keep uh, your uh, video traffic off of your regular uh, network devices. Um, also, you can enable VLANs to separate video traffic from data and voice, or you can do it by physical separation. Uh, jumbo frames should be set to 8K or higher. 
Uh, you should allow multicast traffic on all network ports that are handling uh, video streams and turn senders off if they're not being used. Uh, CULAN units, again, we talked about uh, static or DHCP. Uh, the way the system works is the CULAN is looking at uh, all the devices based on their IP addresses, um, and therefore we strongly recommend using static IP addresses uh, once the system is commissioned, or at the minimum locking your DHCP addresses so that they don't change. Uh, what will happen if you uh, if a device uh, changes its IP address, it'll be lost to the system and you'll have to go back and, uh, and do some configuration changes to put it back in the system. So uh, uh, these are all issues that uh, you can resolve. Uh, and if you have other issues, uh, Geffen offers technical support. Uh, I'll be happy to help you uh, with system configuration issues either before sale or during installation or after installation. Um, what we're looking at to the future, uh, these products have been uh, available for over a year now, but we're doing some massive improvements. Uh, we should have uh, some new firmware coming out uh, within the next uh, 30 to 60 days um, that's offering a number of feature updates. Uh, UDP control, we replace TCP with UDP, which makes the switching significantly faster. We're offering some reduced bandwidth profiles for people who have uh, network uh, traffic and, and uh, bandwidth issues. You can reduce the bandwidth uh, to be less than 150 megabits. It does come at the expense of video quality or, uh, or frame rate, but you can reduce it when necessary. Uh, the Synergy software integration is, uh, is moving forward. Um, there's a whole uh, new procedure for auto IP selection and automatic detection. Uh, some other things that, what? Um, other things that are uh, coming is the, we're trying to get rid of the jumbo frame requirement. Um, independent routing of uh, RS-232 and IR, uh, some additional uh, abilities to shape network traffic uh, to be uh, to match uh, network needs. Uh, we keep increasing switching time. It, it keeps getting faster. Uh, and like we said, uh, multiple CU LAN units. And we're working on uh, 4K uh, capable senders and receivers, uh, that's going to require even more bandwidth, but uh, those, uh, those things are in the works. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, our video over IP uh, offering and matrix offering uh, from Geffen at the moment.